welcome to Are You Karate Kidding Me? Your source for Cobra Kai and Karate Kid <laughs> recaps, reviews, and items of interest from all around the Miyagi-verse. Cartographers of the Miyagi-verse we are. That's right. I'm your host, Colin Kennedy. I am Jenny Carlson, and we are very excited to be here with a special spontaneous, semi-spontaneous episode of our podcast. A special presentation. I was knee-deep in editing the Karate Kid 3 episode, which is still on track for a holiday release, a little Christmas present for everybody, when uh, my Twitter and Messenger feed started blowing up this morning. I mean... We knew. There was the, notice yesterday. Yeah, like, they were teasing it all week, but it could have been anything. It could have been that men's health piece with Ralph Macchio. It could have been Billy Zabka doing, you know, outtakes from his MTV Awards speech. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, this has definitely been a Cobra Kai promo-heavy week, You were also sure. in a work meeting when the trailer dropped, and past a certain point, I could not wait for you anymore. So I watched the trailer without you. I apologize, but I don't really feel sorry. Fair. Well, yeah. I mean... That's all right. We've since watched it several times, <laughs> and we will be looping through it at least a couple more times during this episode. Yes, we're so here to no recap worries. the season three trailer, I should say. Uh, like I said, we were, we're in the middle of making a huge episode, so we thought we would step into the studio and cut a mini episode real quick just to hold everybody over for the next week or so before the next episode comes out. Exactly. And when that comes out, we don't know entirely. We think it's January 8th, but as I will say, there's some scuttlebutt that it might be sooner or later. That's right. So, but definitely January because the, as we will see in the trailer, they kind of lean heavy into the whole New Year's. Old of every, Lang Syne. Yeah, of it all. So. Indeed. Shall we jump in? Let's jump in. Here we go with the Cobra Kai season three trailer. I thought I was doing the right thing. But I failed you. We open with a flashback to Johnny on the beach at the end of season two, drinking, saying in a voiceover he thought he was doing the right thing. Um, and then we see the flashback to Miguel winning in season one at the tournament. Uh, Johnny tells Miguel, but I failed you. We see that he's talking to Miguel in the hospital. Johnny's beaten up, looks like he's been drinking still. Uh, then we see a flashback of the high school fight with Tori throwing Sam against a locker hawk going after a random miyagi Do person and tori and sam and miguel and robbie. robbie fighting and robbie kicking miguel into the stairwell yeah so far all all material that we well covered by now we see johnny squaring off against hawk and some of his henchmen in what looks like the high school and hawk is telling johnny you got soft and we paid the price with flashbacks to some of the stuff from last season it seems like johnny and daniel squaring off against each other in season two episode five when daniel confronts johnny at the dojo and tori uh hitting the punching bag in the final training montage of season two we see Hawk pounding someone on what looks like the floor of Miyagi-Do in a new uh, new sequence shot looking from the ground up. Maybe he's beating up on an animal, as I will speculate momentarily. We see Johnny squaring off against Kreese. This is a flashback to the moment that Johnny tells Kreese that if he wants Cobra Kai, he could have it when Kreese stages his hostile takeover. And the final shot is Johnny giving up Cobra Kai and in that fateful moment, then we cut to the final scene from the previous season finale where Johnny hurls his bottle of booze at the Cobra Kai mobile. Poor Cobra Kai mobile. Here it didn't do nothing to you, the Johnny. The Netflix logo scrolls across the screen and then we cut to the present day panning across the valley. Um, we see that Miguel is still unconscious with Carmen and Rosa visiting him and Daniel's voiceover says the reason the kids got in trouble is because of them. The least they can do is help them out. We see Johnny in jail, probably a drunk tank because there are other people in it. Mm -hmm. uh, we see someone putting cuffs on Robbie, who's wearing a shirt that could be the faded original that he was wearing at the end of season two when he ran off. And he's got a haircut. Yeah, he's cut his hair. Maybe he's trying to evade the cops. We see Sam coming into a newly militarized high school with cops at the door. You mean a high school? Yeah, well, but before now, the Valley was an Edenic state where nah. it was still the 80s and there were no mall cops in your high school. Yeah, so they converted the California high schools to Texas high schools. Indeed, basically. alas. Yeah, yeah. Now, now it's a high school that you and I know well. Mm. Uh, we see Tori counting money in a place that looks like maybe her house. We see the 
Cobra Kai and Miyagi-Do kids facing off again, probably on that first day back. Looks like Dimitri and Hawk still have some very bad blood. The voiceover between Daniel and Johnny cuts to them standing in receipt of flats, and Daniel says to a beaten up Johnny in a red hoodie, so what do you say? So it's obvious they're going to get the band back together, although the band was never really together, were they? No, this is the rare getting the band back together scene where the band was never together in the first place. Well, the band was always together in our hearts. And we can talk about it in the analysis portion, but I have some thoughts on it. Now we have a transitional moment in the trailer where we see Miguel gasping awake in his hospital bed, and then we see Daniel walking into Kreese's Cobra Kai passing fear does not exist in this dojo on the wall because so we hear the kiaz in the background mixed in and you hear crease's voice saying your enemies think they're the hero and you're the villain as crease looks at daniel with satisfaction on his face inside the dojo and we then cut-, cut to mid snake yeah, an actual snake. Cut to actual Not the end snake. snake, but the mid snake, where there's a snake on the ground preparing to strike. And then we see Kreese saying, There is no good, there is no bad. There is no Dana. There is only Zoom. There is only weak or strong. Yeah. And we see during those scenes, we see Hawk getting bullied by Kyler in season one. And then again, now Hawk is turning to see behind him in the dojo in the present day. Kyler is standing there with his arms crossed, like waiting for him. Big reveal. Then we see Daniel and Johnny in what could be a chop shop or some kind of car repair place, uh, scoring off against three guys. Daniel turns anticipating a fight, but Johnny shoves Daniel out of the way to punch someone. Uh, there's speculation with, that I also share that they're there to look for Robbie. And so Johnny wants, I think, I think he wants to get the first punch. We see Amanda on the phone with Johnny and Daniel. Yep, cut to Courtney Hangler bringing the realness once again. Yep, she's our reality effect. She's asking Johnny and Daniel, What are you, Tango and Cash? To which Johnny replied, I know Tango and Cash were narcotics detectives. Oh, I'm sorry. You do realize neither one of you are cops, right? How delightful it is to hear Johnny talk to people when he's like opining on 80s culture when he's just so sure of himself he sounds you know i I have a phd and he in real life and he sounds like people with phds who are just so sure of themselves except johnny's an academic in 80s culture basically he's got a doctorate in the 80s and as they're talking he's sitting in daniel's car daniel's driving and also looks pretty satisfied with himself dr 80s explains that tango (laughs) and cash were narcotics detectives exactly and seeing Dan and Johnny together in a car is just always a good time. You're under the gun, so you take it on the run. Uh, Amanda is, is not as into it because she thinks that Daniel and Johnny are being idiots playing cops. We see Daniel and Johnny fighting one guy at the same time with Johnny sweeping the guy's leg while Daniel kicks him in the face in that chop shop place. I'm saying chop shop because that's what Brianna Davidson called it, and I think she's right. We can go into detail in a minute, but they're probably on the trail of Robbie at that point. So then we see Hawk and his Cobra buddies walking across the schoolyard in athletic gear, which is very reminiscent of the Karate Kid. Cut to some Samantha business, uh, hanging out in the back of uh, Miyagi-Do. And Sam talks to Daniel and says, I thought we were the good guys. And as she and Daniel are talking in voiceover, we see Dimitri running up and sweeping Hawk's leg. It's a, and they're glowering. So they've got the bad blood continues. And Daniel tells Sam, we try to be. And then it shows Robbie squaring off against some dudes in juvenile detention and getting thrown to the floor when they all come in on him. The voiceover says, there's one thing I do know for sure. You can't run away from your problems. Meanwhile, we're seeing some scenes of uh, Tori and Sam in a very dramatically lit, like, We could be back at golf and stuff. That could be like a laser tag area or something like that. It looks like like the video game. There are a few scenes here that look like the video game. There's a lot of business. I mean, there are scenes in the video game that take place in golf and stuff. So that all tracks. Yep. So, yeah, we could tell that Daniel and Sam are going to reconcile. We see them after their conversation fighting with sticks in the home dojo. And they look really excited to be training together. Um, So that's nice to see after all this misery, a moment of goodness. And then we see Miguel telling Johnny, I might never be able to. Never. Can't. Those are just words. They're meaningless. As only Johnny can. Johnny wants to get Miguel back on his feet. We'll have to put a pin on that for a moment because then we cut to a scene that I never thought we would see, but I'm so glad that we got a tease of this, which is Amanda confronting Kreese directly. Yet another scene we never knew we always wanted. From the writers of Cobra Kai, uh, Amanda walking in, uh, squaring off against John Kreese, who's wearing like a gi like his normal gi, but red with a towel around his neck. 
So he's probably doing his own special personal special ops work while dressed up in like Emperor Palpatine colors. Good. And he can good. <laughs> Indeed. And and she she slaps him. And I did tweet, uh, you know, to the both of them on a scale of one to ten, how satisfying was that scene to play? And she replied you would have to ask Martin Cove because that was a real slap. And Marty replied, you know, was it something he said? He's still icing his face. And of course he said, no mercy. If you say no mercy, you receive no mercy. That's right. You live by the slap. You die by the slap, my man. Burn. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that as well. Moving on. Satisfying. Um, We see some old Lang Syne jokes in the title cards as they shift between scenes we see Johnny walking into the Cobra Kai dojo just as Daniel did. Johnny's wearing a black shirt, very decisive walk. We hear him in voiceover telling Miguel probably that he's not a kid anymore. The world isn't going to hand it to him. And in that moment, we also see scenes of Sam and Tori squaring off uh, in the backyard of Miyagi-Do. We see Robbie pinned to the ground with a kind of smirky smile on his face. Uh, we see Johnny rearing up with a kind of kia like he's preparing to either fight or vent his aggression in the special ops room of Cobra Kai. Uh, Johnny's telling Miguel, you once think you're going to have to crawl across the floor. And we see scenes of Miguel fighting that are probably, they look more present day, but they might be a flashback. Uh, and It we might s- be B-roll from seasons one and two. It's true, but he looks a little more like, like Jolo, Jolo looks now. And we see Miguel looking at his legs like they're the big challenge. And then we see Robbie still in juvie looking up at a visitor. And the visitor seated at the table is none other than John Kreese. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of bump up on moments in this uh, Many bump trailers. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So we're kicking our way into 2021 like total badasses. We see Miguel doing crunches with a keg that Johnny is simultaneously using to spray him in the head as they do rehab at Johnny's apartment and Johnny helping to pick Miguel up when he's fallen in the courtyard of Reseda Flats with the voiceover of him telling Miguel he's always going to be there with him, them hugging because he'll always be Miguel's teacher. We see a a picture of him holding Miguel's hand when at the beginning when he's beaten up and Miguel's unconscious. We see Miguel saying, okay, probably maybe as a result of this pep talk, standing up, trying to reach out of his hospital bed, and in classic fashion. And in classic fashion, we play it for laughs. Miguel uh, slips on the railing of his bed and uh, does a pratfall to the floor. Push it. William Zabka giving us one of those great reactions that he does where he's just like, uh, it's all right, you felt like a champ. Now and then key change as we pan across actual Okinawa and we hear Daniel in voiceover saying, Mr. Miyagi taught me everything you know. We see him looking fretfully at a picture of them on his iPhone. We see Tamlin Tomita as Kumiko. Hell yeah. Yeah. Looking beguilingly up at Daniel. We see Daniel turning at a bar to find friggin' Shozen, i.e. Yuji Okamoto. Uh, and, and we hear his voice saying, let's find out, presumably, if Mr. Miyagi taught him everything he knows. And then we see him. And then we're sparring in Okinawa. Maybe they're at Sato's house. Like, maybe he's Sato's successor. Oh, you know he's Sato's successor. He, he runs that island now, yeah, for sure. Miyagi! You forget. You betray me. Then you die as you have lived. A coward. And then we get the end snake that says Cobra Kai season three. Except it's not really the end because there's more. There's always more. It's never over. Uh, the, so yeah, the, the trailer promises New Year. Uh, we get a cut to D. Snyder uh, of Twisted Sister fame playing a concert. As- and Miguel and Johnny are in the audience. We and see- then we cut to Johnny in a white like... Uh, tuxedo jacket kind of looking Miami Vice but also kind of like uh, a little bit dirty dancing he's wearing the black shirt that he had on in the scene when he's walking decisively into Cobra Kai that we saw in the trailer and he's wearing a white dinner jacket or a white like like jacket blazer white jacket blazer, yeah. that looks like the one that Robbie wore when he was being Don Johnson in or unwittingly being Don Johnson yeah in the skating rink in season two and uh, in that scene, Johnny kind of opens his lapels like he's like, see, like, see, I dressed up or like, see, I- I've got it still. Mm-hmm. And he's at what looks kind of like a New Year's Christmas prom. Uh, True. You know, could be some event, could be a high school reunion. I can't remember. I don't think their characters are at the right age 
to be having a you know a round number high school reunion but it's california they have people in chicken suits people drive before they should legally do so like all kinds of things happen in california so it's entirely possible that's california for you indeed now we did not see any bonsai trees so far bonsai tree no not a single bone well i mean maybe in the background of miyagi do but, but there is speculation that in the picture that was released in Entertainment Weekly, Daniel might be carrying a bonsai tree or he might be carrying a shrub that is similar, a cutting from a shrub that is similar to a bonsai tree. Well, I mean, presumably Daniel has run out of uh, all the bonsais that he and Mr. Miyagi cultivated. And then if there's a problem at the dealership, he might not have access to those bonsais. So maybe going back to Okinawa is just an excuse to refresh his supply. <laughs> To reopen Mr. Miyagi's little trees. Exactly. That's his and Johnny's That's, true redemption story. Yeah, we've been watching a lot of Karate Kid 3, so I think a lot of my theories are going to tie directly back to that one. Anyway, we see we see these nice shots of Johnny and Daniel rocking out. Johnny in his fancy getup at the, at the New Year's Christmas prom. Uh, and then that's it. That is it. So should we go on to the wild speculation portion? I mean, that's what y'all came for, right? All right, well... Next up, the wild speculation portion. Where to even start with this? I mean, we, I mean, we're getting pieces of things that we did have some clues about. Like we knew we were going to Okinawa. We knew Chosen was going to be there. Uh, we did not have. This is our first confirmation that Tamla Tamita is also going to be there. Indeed. So I'm very happy about that because this podcast stands Tamlin Tamita. Tamlin Tamita! You might know me from Karate Kid 2, Joe That Club. You might have seen me on Glee. Yeah, we always knew that while we will one day be very happy to see Allie, Kumiko was the one that our hearts hoped for. Yeah, I yeah. mean, sure. Well, well we I mean, let's, let's speculate on that. Do you think that scene at the end with Johnny in the dinner jacket is indeed a reunion, and maybe that is the excuse for bringing Allie back into the fold. I think it is possible that that is what's happening, but I think that that comes at a point, that that may come at a point in the show, well, actually, no, I, I take that back. Yeah, that's totally possible. That's totally possible. Uh, there was some Twitter scuttlebutt from different people that, you know, it might be some sort of, like, LaRusso auto group party, but I, I think it's actually, like, something else. Yeah, why would Johnny be at a Lurusso auto group party unless Daniel, in his graciousness, has decided to <laughs> do what he did for Robbie and give Johnny a job as well? <laughs> oh my God, you don't know how many fanfics feature that. Indeed. Um, well, the other thing. So, speaking of Daniel and Johnny, let me uh, pause on that point for a minute. So clearly, the producers of the show have caught on to something that we've all known from the beginning, which is the brief episodes in season one and two where Johnny and Daniel come together are so satisfying that it appears to be a major plot component of season three. Yes. And that they're either, maybe not in the first episode, but very quickly they're going to elect to team up at some point and probably to track down Robbie but who knows how far this uh, partnership can carry them. They could go all the way to the top. Exactly. Um, and what is the top? The top is the All Valley <laughs> Over 25 Karate Tournament. The top? Whoa. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, you didn't know. Everybody knows about the under 18 tournament, but there have got to be other age groups. Exactly. It was never the kids who needed karate. That's it right. It was the grown-ups who needed karate. That's what's wrong with America. Anyway... So, all right, I have a list of major story elements and plot lines that we can glean from what we've seen. Um, first up, West Valley High is now a police state where tensions continue to simmer. We've seen that already. Yeah, we kind of called that when we were talking about the finale uh, in previous episodes, that it's like there's going to be some real-world consequences flowing out of the giant brawl in the season two finale. Exactly. Second, Daniel and Johnny are going to get the band that never was together, but should have been together back together, as you just call that, probably to find Robbie. Robbie is going to get arrested with at least one of his two dads there, sending him to juvie with a host of trust issues that John Kreese will seek to exploit. This is a theory that Kiri, 
Kiri's handle is LaRusso writes on Twitter spun on Twitter. And I agree with that Mm -hmm. because she spotted Ralph Macchio's hands, right? She saw Daniel in that scene. Right. Uh, And if I didn't already say it, we know that Robbie going to JV is going to be a big deal. We know that that's going to be a thing that will probably not be resolved by the end of the season, just because Cobra Kai does betray some of the rules of reality. Um, So that is grim. The thought that Crease will come when Johnny's guard is down and Johnny's helping Miguel to exploit Robbie. Um, we know that Tori and Sam will continue to antagonize each other and be part of that turf war between Cobra Kai and Miyagi-Do. Um, as we saw on the internet, Aisha is indeed not in this trailer and presumably not in season two, but given how responsible her parents are, it makes sense that she would be pulled out of the whole situation and probably sent to a prestigious boarding school. Another point, Amanda is not going to stand for this bullshit anymore, and now she's going to physically not stand for the bullshit. She is, as Lizzo would say, she is tired of the bullshit. Daniel is going to go to Okinawa, I think, to confront his hero narrative about Mr. Miyagi uh, with an assist from Chosen and Kumiko. That's going to be interesting. I know out of universe why Daniel's going to Okinawa, because fans demand it, and it's a great piece of fan service we get to catch up with old favorites the in-universe reason why he would go is very interesting i feel like this has got to be something that might happen in the first or second episode it's got to happen early in the season right like what the going to go into okinawa because it's like i feel like that is a perfect opportunity like you know at the end of season two amanda's had it and she's like no more karate ever You know, Daniel's in more trouble than he's ever been. Everybody's mad at him. Everybody's mad at karate. Like, the best thing that he could do is take a break, go back to Okinawa, touch base with, you know, the things that he understands. And maybe he will find out some stuff about Mr. Miyagi and Miyagi-Do that he never knew. Maybe some stuff from, you know, Robert Mark Kamen's uh, notebook that never made it into the actual movies. Um, But, like, I I think that is the ideal time. I don't know once the action of the season gets rolling, it wouldn't make a lot of sense for Daniel to be like, oh yeah, everybody put a hold on this. I'm going to go bugger off to Okinawa. Except you brought up a great point, which is the Daniel and Okinawa plot could be kind of this season's twist on the take a right episode from season two where Johnny kind of puts a hold on everything and goes off with the original Cobra Kai's yeah. on their, you know, special mission. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, the next, the next thing on our list is what order is this stuff going to happen in appropriately? We've already transitioned into that. And I think that, um, while the fight with Johnny and Daniel against the chop shop guys, looks like an episode five fight based on the last two seasons we've had. We've had big fights in episode five. Uh, There's a, because John Hurwitz, Brianna pointed this out to me because John Hurwitz said that um, there's going to be a fight in season in episode two that people are going to freak out about that. That could be it because they're looking for Robbie. Right. Um, So, you know, I think Johnny's going to be beat up when the season opens, essentially. Yeah. We might not even see that what happens. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, yeah, this season, this season looks like it's going to open pretty much concurrently with where season two left off. Like, we might get a little bit of jumping around in time. That was the other question I was going to ask you about this season. Like, season one took place over about a school year, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it was, um, you know, September-ish to May. And then season two famously was hashtag cruel summer, where it took like the entire summer and then the end of season two was the start of the new school year. So does season three start up at the beginning of the school year or do we skip forward in time? Here's what I think. Season three starts off at the beginning of the school year and goes at least until the new year, Mm -hmm. like January, December, January to the new year's Christmas prom as I'm calling it that scene where Johnny is in the white coat and the black shirt because it goes like this. The kids return to school. Daniel and Johnny are trying to, to solve the situation. Robbie gets sent to juvie. They agree that they're going to try and fix things, but they have to actually fix things. So somehow Daniel gets introspective midway through the season. He goes to Okinawa 
then he returns. You know, while Daniel is is soul searching, Johnny is trying to do right by Miguel. Carmen is somehow letting him near him again. While both of them are in a rebuilding phase with themselves, with their actual or spiritual kids, Robbie, who is the Achilles heel of both of them, but especially Johnny, gets approached by Kreese. So those scenes with Johnny and, and Daniel walking into the dojo and, and, and then Johnny's in the same shirt as he is in the, at the New Year's Christmas prom. Now, sometimes they have Billy Zabka wear the same clothes on different times, especially in the first season when, you know, he was down on his luck. He was always wearing the same thing because he was sleeping on his floor. You know, I think that what we're seeing is that that is the prelude on the, like the episode nine, when everything looks like it's going well, either Allie is there or Johnny is re- re- reconciling with Carmen or he's you know saying hi to Amanda, or there's just something happening, and then there will be, you know, the big catastrophic thing is is that Johnny goes back, probably because he's found out that Crease has gotten to Robbie, and he's going to go confront that on that turf, and then Daniel follows him in. I'm thinking that's it, and the other thing is that we haven't seen the cliffhanger yet. We don't know. I presume they will heighten, although I'm not sure how that they can. Uh, it might be that we don't get another big like Street Fighter style cliffhanger fight, but we'd rather get a big reveal like with Crease at the end of season one. Maybe we'll get a reveal of Terry Silver or something. Robbie gets a job working for Dynatox as part of his community service. And then he's going to find out what pain and fear really mean. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Dynatox owns that juvenile detention center. Burn. I mean, I, th- I think... <laughs> I think Blackwater of the Miyagi-verse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No, I I'm definitely think we're on point for a lot of this stuff. I mean, keep in mind that this show has been, this season of the show has been completed for a while. Like, all this stuff was shot, like, what, back in 2019? Mm-hmm. We and they have the advantage of being able to cut the trailer from stuff from the entire season. So it's very likely we could be looking at stuff from the entire season, or they could be holding on on us, and we could be seeing stuff from, like, the first three episodes. Typically, when you see new season trailers, you are only getting the first couple of episodes because those are the only ones that have been produced enough that can make the cut. But, yeah, like, this could be the whole season. John Hurwitz says we ain't season. seen nothing yet. Yeah, so I'm thinking maybe they're holding out at least a couple of episodes from... It's only... a two or three minute trailer so like there's only so much they could cram in there anyway i think that we're seeing that the majority of scenes that we're seeing are from the first half but the stuff with johnny and miguel and the stuff where they're working together and retraining might come after because we see less of that Mm -hmm. right so i think that that's going to come later and uh, i think we still don't really know what the big thing is that we'll twist the knife at the end. I have one more prediction. Oh. Yes. But it's for us. For who? For you and I. Oh, us. Yeah, I think on January 8th or whenever the premiere date is. Last time we heard it was January 8th. Right. Uh, I think you and I are going to stay up. We're <laughs> going to watch all the episodes when they drop. We may have to order a couple pizzas. The we may have to take are an afternoon nap. Lengths. Oh, that is also wild. Yeah, like, we're going to is... need, like, no dose. Not that I advocate taking drugs, kids. But yeah. But even then, the show varies in length, but usually they're around 30 minutes. So, yeah. like, we can knock it out in a few hours. But I think you and I are going to stay <laughs> up late. I think you and I are going to eat some pizza, record at least the episodes on the season three premiere, and try and have them out as quickly after that season drop as possible we will cross that bridge when we come to it but i want to get back to one other question which is do we think it's still going to release all of it at once on january 8th because now this trailer just says coming january there's an old lang syne track a, a rock a rock and roll old lang syne track playing so does that mean that they might drop it on new year's because people are going to be home and ready to binge does it mean they're going to Mandalorian us? Huh. I proposed on, on Twitter that they should do like the Mandalorian and do it on, or if I were Netflix, I would release it weekly, like David Letterman with my next guest. Because honestly, I can't think of another show that I would be more desperate to watch each week than Cobra Kai. I mean, that is definitely a strategy that more and more streaming services are adopting, trying to make a streaming show more into appointment television to where it's like it drops week to week and everybody tunes in or stays up late the night that it drops. I know it sounds cruel, but my God, I mean, otherwise we just have to wait for 
the next season anyway. So spread it out so yeah. we can enjoy it. I, I won't be I won't be happy if that's what happens, but I can see the marketing. Yeah, uh, I mean, if they were going to drop, the, I mean, it is interesting. They changed the information from the first trailer. The first trailer clearly said January eighth, right? And this trailer just says January. And it, yeah, it's interesting what this trailer doesn't tell us, which is it doesn't say full season. Right. It doesn't say specifically January 8th. It just says January. Although, again, they're leaning into the whole old Lang Syne. Like you said, they could drop it early. That would be a wild move. But again, the whole season is produced. There's no reason they couldn't do that. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think that there's something to that. If that's the case, then that's just going to screw up everything for me because it's like, I, if I'm going to take a day off of work to watch the show, I need to know what day I'm taking off. <laughs> or call in sick, I guess. I have, a, I have a question. Is the snake, which is, I think, in an aquarium-style case uh, in the room when Amanda walks in and slaps a crease, is the snake Crease's horcrux? Is the snake Terry Silver's real form? I know. <laughs> or is the snake... Just a snake that he's there to abuse. Is the snake ultimately going to kill John Kreese? Wow. Is that Chekhov's, is that Chekhov's cobra? That is definitely Chekhov's cobra. I mean, I don't know if it's an actual cobra. Something's happening with up. that cobra. I'm not a herpetologist. I don't yet. know. I mean, I I'm mean, a karate we'll herpetologist, yes. but that's it. That does bring up another point that I wanted to make about Cobra Kai, which is this interesting line that they tread where the show walks up right to the line of being serious and then they kind of walk it back a little bit, right? Because, like, season two ended on a very harsh down note where Miguel was seriously hurt. Like, there was a major law enforcement issue at the (laughs) high school. Let's put it that way, right? We're seeing some of the consequences of that, obviously. Robbie and Juvie, we get a lot of that, those cuts in the trailer. Yep. But then we see Miguel doing physical therapy with Johnny, and they're playing it for laughs, right? There is some heart behind it because, like, Johnny is, you know, William Zag is amazing in that he can do that turn where he can deliver a snappy one-liner and then with just a, a quick look, like, Kill like, you. <laughs> yeah, like he says volumes with his facial expressions. So it's like when he's talking to Miguel, like you could see it in his eyes that he like really cares for this kid. But then they'll do like Miguel will take a prat fall off the side of the bed, right? Yep. And so it's like it, it's it's very interesting because this is a very serious issue and it'll be very interesting to see how they handle it. Miguel seems to be seriously hurt but he seems to be seriously hurt in a soap opera kind of like a moira rose soap opera kind of way to mm-hmm. where it's like eight hours of watching sunrise bay make me feel a little not right in the head it had that effect will you be trapped in this crystal the entire episode best to skip ahead where it's <laughs> like they kind of wink and nod and say nah he's fine well he's still gonna be him which is i think yeah. great we're gonna get to appreciate miguel as a human being and as 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 Miguel right. through this, and we're still going to be able to laugh, and it's going to be funny, even though it's also really serious. I think they're definitely going to hold out on Miguel's recovery as long as possible. Like I feel like it'll kind of parallel season one, where it's like Miguel goes from zero to hero, and in season three, Miguel goes from being in a wheelchair and, and having... The serious issue, and that might be a big reveal, like either at the midpoint of the season or at the climax of the season, and that will let you know that the show is about to turn around and some big stuff is about to happen. So, lest I forget, I'm looking at the Cobra Kai first look that came out in Entertainment Weekly, which you know some of our other fellow content producers have covered, and there are a couple of scenes that you know are in these that are not in the trailer, and I'm going to point them out really quickly. Okay. One is. Johnny, Crease, and Daniel all seated in a row at a, in a tiered auditorium, which could be a meeting of the Karate High Council. Daniel's got a folder with him, so that seems likely. Maybe they're being you know, censured or who knows what's going on. There is a picture of Daniel at Amanda in what looks like a principal's office looking quite unhappy. So probably Sam is suspended, would be my guess. Mm-hmm. We have a dis- disheveled Johnny talking to Miguel in the hospital bed again. And we have Daniel and Sam sitting sulkily by what looks like the reservoir and Robbie and Juvie. And then a couple of shots of Cobra Kai kids, a couple of shots of the Miyagi-Dos. 
But yeah, I'm curious about this Karate High Council picture, and I'm curious about Daniel and Amanda. I'm guessing the Daniel and Amanda scene is at the top, but I don't know when the Karate High Council scene happens in the tra- in the trajectory that I just came up with while watching the trailer. I mean, it could be Karate High Council. I think it's also likely it could just be Robbie's juvie hearing. Yeah, because eventually true. we we see him go to juvie. We know that you know everybody's hunting for him, and eventually he does get caught. So that's probably what it is. And of course, if Crease is there, then he knows exactly where Robbie is and how he can get him. Why is Crease at that hearing, though, if, if he and Johnny have fallen out? Like, how does he have, because he gets the letter to the dojo or something? Like, I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, Crease <sighs> took over. Crease did a kind of quasi identity theft on Johnny to where it's like during Johnny's big summer break. Uh, while he was out of the dojo, like, Kreese took over the QuickBooks for the dojo. He took over the mailing address. The lack of control over my business made me a little intense. But now QuickBooks helps me get paid. He pulled a single white female on Johnny. and He really did cool. single white female, Johnny. That's true. I know you weren't yourself when you did this thing. I know. <laughs> I was you. Mm-hmm. You guys, I know that this is schmaltzy, but we are watching a karate soap opera. And sort of a space opera. I can't help but wonder if maybe Kreese is going to Darth Vader us all and reveal that he's Johnny's real dad. <laughs> Which I'm, I know you guys are rolling your eyes. I'm sorry. Like, it's not going to happen. But he's so friggin' territorial with Johnny. I think we're too Johnny. far afield for that. But he's I think... so territorial with Johnny. Like, why? Why go to Robbie? Why? But I wouldn't rule out some of our other predictions, such as Terry... Uh, Silver being the governor of California or... Who also owns Dynatox that owns the the jail, the prison industrial complex in California. That's a very 2020 place to be, for sure. It is. Everything that's old is new again. The 80s are very, very in vogue at this time. Indeed. Ugh, there's so much here. I I keep wondering... There's tons here. We've got this thing again. We've got it back on loop and now that the recap part is done and I keep seeing things like... What is Hawk's tattoo? In slow-mo, it kind of looks like a turkey. I'm sure someone has frozen this image and is. I mean, the moon I think in, in Co- if I'm in the Cobra Kai writer's room, it's like Hawk gets the moon tattoo modified and the tattoo artist messes it up and, and changes it into a turkey or something dumb. That would be pretty great, actually. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen, but that would be pretty great. <laughs> that's about as likely as John Kreese being Johnny's real dad, but they do have the same. Yeah, I think you and I will still have plenty of speculation left, but I think what we'll do is we will take all that to our Twitter, uh, which is Karate Kid Pod. Indeed. I love to see everybody uh, stopping by to like our page on Facebook. Yep. Uh, I like everybody following us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Mm -hmm. and wherever you download your podcasts of choice. Yep. Uh, Definitely do not forget to rate and review us if you like our podcast podcast if you like our snarky take on uh are on we some... snarky oh when this karate kid 3 episode drops i think it's going to be the maximum amount of snark we can deliver the snark meter will will burst spoiler alert but we may endanger the mr miyagi bonsai tree machine uh in that episode that's true <laughs> i had to get it fixed just so that we could use it again for this you episode. know when a bonsai tree machine breaks it's really not pretty at all bonsai indeed but the, but the house was very fragrant afterwards very that's... piney uh and, anyway but i think that is a great place to leave for now be on the lookout for that episode and until next time i've been colin Kennedy. i've been jenny carlson we will see you around the miyagi verse we'll see you around the miyagi verse This podcast has been produced and hosted by Colin Canaday and Jenny Carlson. Our music is by Cheppo. You can find us at Karate Kid Pod on Twitter. And wherever you download podcasts.